This show is a member of the Sorgatron Media Podcast Network. Find out more at sorgatronmedia.com. This show is brought to you by IndieWrestling.us. Check out IWC, RWA, and more. And listeners like you, support this show at Patreon.com slash Wrestling Mayhem Show. It is the Indie Mayhem Show. I'm Mike Sorg at Sorgatron on the Twitter here in the Sorgatron Media Studios in the Beachview neighborhood of Pittsburgh, PA, and ready to talk indie wrestling with some people in and around the industry. Uh, but of course, you can check out everything at WrestlingMayhemShow.com. You can subscribe to Indie Mayhem Show on iTunes, Stitcher, Spreaker, iHeartRadio, and Google Music Podcasts. Google Play Music Podcasts, however you want to. I think it all works. Uh, and of course, the video versions on the Wrestling Mayhem Show Facebook and YouTube page. And of course, both over at our affiliates, IndieWrestling.us. And please uh, drop us a line. Any uh, ideas uh, for anybody you'd like us to talk to or anybody? Uh, 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 we take suggestions over at Good Times at Wrestling Mayhem Show dot com or 412-206 WMS0. No, WMS. Yeah, WMS0. That's right. I don't know why I'm doubting that. I'm confused because we did another podcast because we have here in studio. These guys were in here. We were doing the political mayhem show. Episode and decided, two. And we we're pulling them together and let's 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 talk some indie mayhem while we have everybody in studio. Let's, let's seize the opportunity. We have, of course, you heard that voice there real quick. Bert Legrand, old school Bert Legrand, of course, announcer with the Renegade Wrestling Alliance currently. Because when you want somebody to talk about the uh, state of Pittsburgh wrestling, you want somebody who works three hours a month. <laughs> In it. Yeah, yeah. Well, let's make sure you know. But I do keep. I no, I do keep up with everybody. And uh, you, you are representing the action in West Newton. Yes, I'm you, representing. You, you got your ear to the ground. That's right. That's right. <laughs> that's right. And the other guy that's got his ear everywhere else is uh, <laughs> is BC Steel. Yes, my ear, my hands. Yes, yes, my Com- feet. Commentator and uh, uh, and uh, manager with uh, what do we count? Like three or four promotions uh, currently. I am manager and sometimes commentator at IWC. I manage at Rise. Uh, commentator for Premier mm-hmm. in Cleveland and anybody else who is looking to uh, accentuate their show with the excellence that is before them there you go or or uh, if you're booking fashion shows apparently that's in the uh, you know uh Ooh. milan italy called and uh, i oh, may yeah, be yeah, flying yeah. over there to with uh, mambo italiano's chinchilla and uh <laughs> and house cat fur coat so <laughs> that is I, th- that was the first thing on that show that i'm like i gotta go see this rise show yes uh, it was it was it was canceling plans when i, I reposted that so, but no, I got you guys here, and I, you know, you're representing, you know, several promotions uh, between the two of you, uh, and, and history, and history, the, the history, history the history you know, between ret- you guys. on that one, yes. <laughs> I think we've we've covered uh, between the two of us. I think we've worked every promotion, yes, yeah, every yeah. good promotion. Yeah, but, even even we're, we were talking about uh, Berlin, you yeah, know, some you, of the more fly by night ones too. <laughs> <laughs> no, no, uh, no. Historically speaking, yes. shows have been shows that through the years, yes, that have been you know one or one or two shows, a handful of shows. Where they mm-hmm. bring in, yeah, you know, they want to bring in as many experienced, established pe- yeah. people like yourself and, and me uh, as possible, just to you know stabilize things. And we get as much money as we can, and then they're gone. And then we go. There you go. <laughs> right. There you go. It's like it's like a wonderful pro wrestling pyramid scheme. Because I think that's also one of the things we talked about. We'll, we'll, and we'll we'll bring this up: the the proliferation, not uh, current wrestling as well as well as throughout time mm-hmm. of of the the groups that have come up in Pittsburgh and the ones who have of course stayed the course, right? The PWXs, the IWCs. Yeah, RWA. I think it's, RWA counts in that conversation. Now. Absolutely. After yeah. nine, nine years, years, nine years. That's yeah. the, there are plenty that have come and gone right. in that nine years alone. Right. And, and they were the upstart thing where, uh, yeah, maybe you don't want to deal with them like at a time, but they grew. They yeah, they, they, grew, they grew into grew, a position. They grew. Derek has a, had a vision, mm-hmm. and you know he started. It's like it's like the Drake song started at the bottom. Now we're here, and it's it's. He has grown that to, and I'm not just talking because I'm in RWA, but just as an observer of what he has done to be able to grow that from where it was Mm -hmm. to what it is now. A consistent draw every month in multiple hundreds. Incredible energy, speaking personally. It may be the most consistent draw in the area. I would think so. I I really do, because I think even looking at court time shows, like they they fluctuate a little bit. Um, I, I can't think of anybody else that long that has that kind of crowd go. 
I would say that, and, and this is a compliment uh, because I hold Norm in high esteem, mm -hmm. which I'm sure some will knock me for, but Feel Bad reminds me in a lot of ways of Norm. Yeah. Consistent yeah. draws. You know, going into a show, if you're working on the show, you know what you're going to get. Yeah. And Norm was right. very, very good at getting people to the building. Uh, Norm was great. I, I, I still all the respect in the, world, in the world for Norm. Norm is one of the people that I, well, I guess you could say thank or blame, depending on who you talk to, <laughs> for me being in wrestling as a whole. Absolutely. And, and so, and, and, and of course, disclaimer, like I, of course, work with IWC, work right. with RWA, have uh, in, in, in about a year ago, I decided I wanted to try to at least set foot in every promotion in the area. Yes. And, you know, went to PWX, went to KSWA, I think KSWA officially for the first time that wasn't like in the parking lot down the street here. Mm -hmm. um, and PWX, I'd, I'd been to back in the day, right? Uh, and, uh, you know, Rise as they were coming up and seeing that and, and even working the Stomp Out Cancer show in that building. Uh, so that's, that's kind of my thing. But again, I kind of have a fandom for everybody. Oh, sure. Uh, at this point and keep an eye on everything. Even Black Diamond I got to get to recently, uh, which was a first for me. And something that we've heard about and talked about on this program, or not, but Mayhem Show in general, forever, you know, that, that we've had guys that have been a part of that. So... Um, so, so, you know, again, the question on the table, like, let's talk about the state of where we are. Uh, you know, it, it seems like more and more promotions are popping up. I hear about, you know, the word that more may pop up. It seems like, you know, it's not easy to get a license in Pennsylvania. No. First of all, but for a, a, a state that is in that position, there seem to be a lot in the area. Pittsburgh has a long history of professional wrestling, studio wrestling, the Bruno and San Martinos. How many people from Pittsburgh on Monday Night Raw alone right now? Hmm. At least three, right? Um, you know, and, and and there's a lot happening. There's uh, IWC is probably coming off one of the hottest years they've had in a while. Absolutely. Right. Um, as far as exposure and excitement. And, and the things that have been going on there, um, you know, RWA, again, very consistent uh, with everything they're doing. That crowd, I'm about at the at, at this point, halfway through editing the last show for the anniversary show. Yes. And uprising. just, and, you know, got, got you know, an intermission and just explosive into the, you know, first half of the show. Yep. Right. That, that crowd is into it. That crowd is nuts. I, I'm interested to see they still have the energy throughout the rest of the night. They, you they know, did. It, they it, did. It, they I, did. I know they are because they, they are very, very into it. And there's a lot of big stuff still on my list to get to there so you know what what do you think is you attribute to well what is the state is it is it healthy is all the promotions a detriment to the area uh what what's kind of your general general feelings about what you're seeing out there these days uh, well would you like to handle that one first or would you like me <laughs> no um what, what i see in terms of the different areas now competition is always healthy oh yeah I, I think that's that's first and foremost competition Effective competition, a well-run infrastructure, uh, you know, a, a very talented roster from top to bottom, talented support staff, uh, you know, everything. Not, people who run the concession stand, the announcers, the referees, everybody. We need to start down. interviewing concession stand workers. That's okay. right. We do need to. We do. Need they to. get a lot of action. <laughs> the secrets of the nachos. That's, yes. <laughs> yes. <laughs> Rise of Wrestling, how's that popcorn so cheap? <laughs> it's actually really good, by the way. It is, it's it is. Really it's good. pretty amazing. And yes. you go with five bucks and you're it's like an old movie theater, but you're just like, I can't I back with all this stuff. Yeah. But anyways. That, no, that's that's a great venue. We did you know the VOW shows mm -hmm. of years course. ago that venue. So I mean that's i I'm a big fan of that venue that uh, Rise runs out of. But mm -hmm. uh, um I think it's it's healthy as long as it's done properly. As mm -hmm. long as there's a good uh, a good business model. And I think now Nowadays, uh, you know, it's easy to do it well mm -hmm. because with social media and just getting the word out, it's easy to get the word out. It's easy to put uh, to to have good comp to to be a good presence in a, in a competitive area. You could do it the right way. You could do it the wrong way. Right. And I think the ones that are doing it the right way are, are very effective at it. Absolutely. There's there's a few things to understand with Pittsburgh indie wrestling. As I feel like I'm coming down off the mountaintops with two stone tablets reading the, the Ten Commandments. but The commandments of indie wrestling. Yes. <laughs> as deciphered by BC Steel. Um, there, there's always going to be bad. That's just what there sure. is. There's going to be companies that aren't good. There's going to be companies that are great. There's, there's always a pecking order. Here's first, here's second, here's third. The nice thing is it's objective. Right. There's some fans that go to every show. There's some fans that only go to this show. There's some fans that only go to that show. There's some fans that want to see names that they can see on Ring of Honor. And that's yeah. it. That's all they want to see. Or WWE stars. There's some fans that are are so invested in local talent that they'll go where they're at. Right. And there's some fans that just want to see 
where uh, where this company. I'm loyal to this company, and, and that's fine. The thing that I always say, because you, I'm sure you've heard it a million times, Bert, and Sorg, you've heard it too. Support indie wrestling. Yes. I always put a caveat on that. I always put support good indie wrestling. Yes. Okay. I yes. mean, when you look at things, Rise is out in Connellsville. Mm-hmm. Uh, when you look at product and everything, Rise is out in Connellsville. They have their thing. They're an upstart. They've just started, but have a lot, a lot of good. And I don't just say that because I work there. They have a lot of good things going on. Uh, RWA has their rabid fan base. The one thing I do know about RWA is they have a very rabid fan yes. base. Like yeah. Memphis style type. They're invested in these characters one way or another if they falter the fans falter with right. them they feel uh for us the express now fight society has just gone through a change so they're in in an essence a genesis of of where they're at they've been it's around 20 plus years but yeah and, and yeah and something pwx was had such a long history too yeah mm-hmm. so it's it's now fights it's a completely yeah. different d- different dynamic and that's what you got to do sometimes you got to freshen up your product uh, you mentioned or change your product i should say you mentioned iwc uh, probably the best year that they've had. I've only been there back two years, but I would say the best year that they've had this is, since the Norm era. The yes. only reason I say that is I wasn't around for the end of the Norm era, the Chuck era. So I, I'm speaking from what I've seen. Mm-hmm. Uh, and then you've got KSWA, which runs specifically in the city of Pittsburgh. Yeah. Like, Very regularly, 500 people in yeah. that venue. But I mean, also, it's a different attraction. <clears throat> Yeah, it's yes. a completely it's, different it's, type it's show. It's a different kind of wrestling. It's um, the people there. Again, it's the only venue that I, I believe that there is drinking. Alcohol, yes. Yeah, there's yeah. alcohol. That and helps. It, and that's, yeah. I mean, it's, it's an, it is an alcohol-fueled right. crowd. Yeah, absolutely. Right? Um, and, and it's a very old-school kind of presentation. You know, which is really cool that there's that throwback kind it's, of. It's sort thing of it's it. sort of the that one is sort of the legacy of studio wrestling. Yeah, maybe. yeah, absolutely. Whereas the other groups, the, the ones we've talked about, are sort of the the legacy of the industry in general. Right, right, right. And and that was that one the KSWA the crazies they're the legacy of the studio wrestling. Yeah, Bruno San Martino, Chili Billy, Jumpin' Johnny, Batman, right. that legacy. They're sort of keeping it. You know, in, in Pittsburgh in that regard. And it gets a lot of awareness for it. It is, of course, the only regular promotion in city limits. Yes. Uh, so when you talk Pittsburgh wrestling, like they're the only one in Pittsburgh for yes. the most part. Um, and and they they get a lot of press out of that, too. Yep. They just did you know, a big article in Post-Gazette. They were in the Wall Street Journal. like, And it's really cool that that gets a lot of, lot of attention there. And the thing that is unique, they've always used mon- mainly, mainly their home ground, home... English is my second language That's for right. anybody wondering. Mm-hmm. Uh, gibberish is my first, and I speak a little Pittsburghese. Uh, <laughs> they've always had their homegrown talent, and they've always had a few out, quote unquote, outsiders. Yep. Uh, a few shows that I worked, I think I was an outsider because I didn't start there. I didn't mainly work there. But they're bringing in a, uh, some more outsiders than normal, and I think that's beneficial yeah. Yeah. to not only help their homegrown talent that, quite frankly, may not have ever worked anywhere else, but it also gives them a fresh perspective. Yeah. They can freshen things fresh, up. Uh, fresh set of eyes. And that is where I think Pittsburgh is flourishing now more than it has been. Mm-hmm. I am from the late 90s where there were mainly three companies. There was Steel City Wrestling, there was PWX, and there was FNW, which were run on occasion. Right. And that, well, United States Championship Wrestling, they jumped off. So it was always three or four at most. So I'm always under the ink, the ilk of, well, we should only have three or four. I understand that's ridiculous. The, the one thing that I will say is if, if you're running a company and it, feel free to jump in, right. don't run. If you can help it, try and run on a different night from somebody. Or if you yes. have to run, yes. be yes. so far away. Mm-hmm. Because like, like there's nothing like RWA and IWC just, I mean, a headache for me because I do production for both. But one was in Royal Valley. One was in RWA. Or was it in West Virginia? Or West, West Newton. Newton right. Excuse me. Uh, so, I mean, there's not much impact there. Right, yeah, and, yeah. and in the, the crowds are so different, anyway. So, yeah, yeah, like I've seen them not get a hit. Like RWA uh, regularly runs against Super Indie, right? Super Indie has Adam Cole and all this stuff going on. Do not see a dip in RWA, right? T- t- yeah, when when TNA TNA ran, well, <laughs> I'm, I'm, I'm yeah, saying yeah. I'm saying in terms of bigger name promotions, and that's yeah, just that's yeah. just happens. a lot of names. That's just happenstance because I mean I know you know that's when. You know, because there's a lot of logistics that go on too. It's yeah. not. It's not like there's some evil intent going on. Oh, we got to run the same night as these guys to screw them over. It is a lot of logistics in terms of the the back office stuff that nobody sees. That yeah, you get you only get a certain amount of dates at a certain venue. I mean, you, you got you got to take them. You know, smoke them when you got them. Take them when 
when they're available to you. Exa- and the example I'll give, IWC runs court time. Court right. time isn't just IWC events. Right. They've got sporting events going on. They've got exactly. all kind of stuff going yeah, on. They, so, don't, they don't get a lot of movement with those dates, I yeah, don't think. So it's, so. hey, here's your dates for the year. And I, I, IWC and court time have a great relationship. So mm-hmm. they, they're very symbiotic in, in how, they, how they do things. They help one another, too. And, uh, and probably one of the nicest venues in the area, too. I would agree, yeah. So, I mean, there, there's showers. There's a sauna. There's... <laughs> I mean, I have my own private locker room, but right. uh, uh, it's actually it's outside. No, uh, <laughs> but but what you mentioned about what goes into an event, just to give people an idea, you need a license, you need yep. a doctor, you need uh, insurance, you need a bond f- for the license, right? You need the talent, you need a building, you need to n- let the talent know what they're going to do on the show. You may need to deal yeah, with the talent booking. if they're going to complain about what they're doing on the show, right? You need to manage manage the talent, yeah. right? You need referees, you need the ring announcer, you need the camera crew. Thankfully, the wonderful people at Circuitron Media do an excellent job. Yes, they do. We're getting, yes, paid. They we're, do. We're getting paid for this, right? I don't know. If okay, I don't so, know. but um, no, but but you need all that to go into it. So right. from from anybody that that gives the the thinking that it's easy, it's it's definitely not. And I think that also speaks to. Some people think that the area is oversaturated, and I get that. You've got KSWA, RWA, IWC, PWX, Rise. Right. It's an hour away, but Black Diamond. You Five count. star now. Yeah, they're yeah, up there. Sure. So, so we're talking like seven, eight promotions within an hour radius. Yeah. Uh, <laughs> to somebody that only works two of them, it, really no skin off my nose. It doesn't really mm-hmm. bother bother me, but. I think that might be a problem more from a promoter perspective and a fan perspective, especially if there's something that they really want to see. For that fan that might go to to three RWA shows a year, three IWC shows a year, three yep. this, three, and maybe have to pick and choose, especially financially, because if five companies run in a month, yeah, that's, that's seventy five hundred bucks plus your food plus. You right. know, you have to, you have to budget for independent yeah. wrestling, and that's just for one person, yeah, not which, a family, it, which I think is a blessing and a curse. I admit, I admit, I used to be very, very bitter. Ask any of my friends, and they will tell you <laughs> that I hated. That there were so many companies. Why couldn't it be like it yep. was? And when I see guys that don't realize that the business evolves and things like that, and there are more, I think, independent wrestlers now than there have ever been. With I, I, mm-hmm. I can buy that. Guys Absolutely. coming in from Cleveland, guys coming in. The training schools that that the area has put out, uh, some really good talent. I'll say some really great talent, not yeah, just yeah. from mm-hmm. the Gory and the Shima era, but from there up until here we are in 2018. Yeah. Oh, sure. Uh, just talent that's really, really has potential, male and female. Yeah, and, and, and to see it, I mean, to see it evolve from different different places. I mean, I know I speak from you know, uh, I exist in RWA, where the the farm system doesn't necessarily exist we don't have a training you know a training area in rwa no, Der- no. Derek picks and chooses from different federations you know locally five or six established guys tennessee established guys that sort of thing so he he of, of the of the groups that run in pittsburgh he's probably the most uh active in terms of outside the market bringing guys in on the on the reg not just a name but you know uh, regular guys interspersing them i know some of the other groups i mean you know rise fight society iwc they have great farm systems. They really do a good job in terms of just bringing up talent and yeah. developing that talent. And some of the names that are out there now, you know, your 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 Gannons, your Davises, your Moriarty's, guys like that, guys who are really coming to their own in, in record time. That speaks to the training infrastructure in the area. Absolutely. Mm-hmm. And, and another thing too, and you can definitely speak because we started right around the same time. Absolutely. Two thousand one for me. Yep. June. Same here. I think. Yeah, I was gonna say you were one month before me. You son of a. <laughs> but um, like I am the wrestling veteran. Tends to be uh, secular, circular, secular, Cic- cyclical, cyclical. There we go. <laughs> See there. I say the wrong word. That's the experience <laughs> coming in. That's that month. I See, learned. I learned he, cyclical. He learned that before. in June of '01, and they stopped using <laughs> it. Nobody ever used it since. I was like, damn it, no. But um, like in the late '90s, you had uh, where uh, I don't want to say smaller guys, but but smaller guys. I can't think of another way to word it. Right. Hentai, Devil, Brandon K. Uh, Vince yeah. Kaplack, guys that weren't that six foot eight or six foot five or 300 pounds, just smaller guys that were doing a different style. Sure. Fast forward a few years after that, Gory and Shima, who I think are two of the possible best that could ever have come out of this area. That's right. including guys that are they like the game. Sterling James Keenan and, and that. They were doing stuff that from Mexico and Japan. And I think some of the influences from their trainer, Shirley Doe, uh, who actually trained Hentai and Devil uh, as well. Mm-hmm. 
if you go down the the lineage of Shirley Doe, who he's trained and who the people that he has trained is trained, like he's responsible for a lot of great. He he yeah. needs to get a plaque or something. His tree. I mean, they talk about the coaching trees in the NFL. Yeah. I mean, you have training trees in wrestling. Yeah. The Shirley Doe tree has a lot of strong branches. Yes. On it, and then fast forward. As that's my best shot at a sure. metaphor. That sure. Was a good but metaphor. then you that's fast good. forward yeah. to now, and not under the Doe tree, but under the the Fight Society tree with right. with where Lee Moriarty trained. I mean, Lee Moriarty does stuff that in a way it blows my mind and I'll put Sean Phoenix in there too. Cause he yes, had trained there. Yes. Another just really? guys are coming through that. Just how do they do that stuff that mm-hmm. are just such a different style compared to everybody else? Yeah. I love it. He was at a, I think it was a black diamond and I overheard somebody saying, Oh, who's this Lee Warrior guy? He's like, well, he's not going to be in the area much longer. Yeah. Because <laughs> right. He's freaking on a, yeah. on a path, right? He, he's a guy that has the ability to, I think go to the next level. Like, yes. Who am I to say? But just from seeing what guys have done, he he does it the right way. Mm-hmm. He doesn't have some ego. I always say, look at guys like Elias Samson. Right, right. Look at guys like Sterling James Keenan or Corey Graves, uh, that hipster thing. We knew him back then. Or right. or Shima. Look mm-hmm. at those guys. They weren't DJ Z. Yeah, DJ Z. Z right. guys out there. Shima Zion to you and well, me. We knew maybe, him yeah. back in no, the day. But, yeah. but if you look at those guys, they didn't worry about what people said on social media. No. They didn't mm-hmm. worry about uh okay does, is this promotion mad at this promotion they went in they worked they right. traveled here they traveled there they got noticed here they networked here they tried to get in here etc 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 and when you look at that that progression of of how they went those are the guys you want to follow and they all came from the same spot pittsburgh and and, and you bring up a very very good point because wrestling locally at least did for a while i don't necessarily necessarily see it now maybe because i'm more out of the game in terms of me pulling back a little bit very clickish. It can, can be. be. It, it can be. It can be very clickish, where there can be a lot of bad attitudes that develop. And and the guys we talked about, the guys who made it, the 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 Shimas, the Corey Graves. Uh, I'll throw Corey Graves' little brother in there as well. That's Sam, true. Sam Adonis yes. is killing it in Mexico right now. Oh true. yeah, uh, um, and just announced coming back here in March. Right. Yeah, for, for the IWC show. Um, but those guys, Elias, those guys sort of existed outside of those bubbles. Absolutely. By and large, they did. Absolutely. And um, you know, I think it shows. It shows in terms of they took different paths to get where they are, especially, um, you know, I, I work closely with both Sam and uh, and, and, and Corey Graves and, uh, and FNW, uh, you know, which was run by their, their father, Dan Polinsky. And, you know, that was sort of where they cut their teeth. I mean, mm-hmm. Sterling and other places, but mostly Sam there. So it was very, it, it's interesting to see that path that they took. Maybe I'm more, I closely identify with those two more because I was, I was more uh, in with them than, than the other guys. But it's interesting to see like how they develop and to see some of the guys now, the Moriarty's and some of the other guys who are really starting to shine locally, who, who could, as you said, yeah. you know, they, you know it's the, the cliche, oh, we'll see them on Monday someday. But you know, it, it's interesting to see how they develop within the social structure of local wrestling. So we do have a question from the chat room. Bradley's in there. Bradley! Uh, Bradley! Yes! Uh, he has, he says, uh, are other cities, are there other cities that have as many promotions as Pittsburgh? Does Cleveland has as much saturation, for instance? Now, BC, I know you're a little bit familiar with that, with you know being involved with Premier. Yeah, Cleveland has Premier. They had now, now. This is, I will say, an hour from Cleveland. I yeah. believe. Yeah. It, it, to me, if I'm not in Pittsburgh, and we're talking about a lot of things that are like an hour away from Pittsburgh. Today, yeah. So. so, but Cleveland is three hours from Pittsburgh. So I will say yeah. that there's Cleveland. There's AIW. Yep. Uh, there's obviously Premier. Mm-hmm. There is there's an RAPW, but that might be Youngstown, which is in between Cleveland and Pittsburgh. That's about an hour and a half, uh, C- I think. CKCW, CKCW, Cleveland Knights Championship Wrestling. Yeah. Uh, there's Mega Championship Wrestling. Shout out to them in Elyria. That's a little bit outside of Cleveland. Right. Mm-hmm. Uh, there is there are a few others. Um, not sure on their schedules or or where they fall into that. I would say Pittsburgh might have Cleveland beat, but. If they do, it's only by a couple. Mm-hmm. And I think... And also generating some really great talent. Ray Rowe, most recently signed. Mm-hmm. Um, Gargano. Uh, you yeah. know, Gargano. And, uh, and, 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 Dave, or, well, and, EC3. And, 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 and much yeah. like, you know, we talk about some of the guys that are like, oh, that's a Shima trainee. Oh, that's a Shirley Joe trainee. Like, there's a few people, you know, coming down to rise lately. And it's like, well, that's a Gargano trainee. I was like, oh, okay. You know, yeah. they're like, okay, keep an eye on that one. Because mm-hmm. if they're, you know got anything out of being training with somebody like that, they're going to be pretty decent. Yeah. There's, there's Daniel C. Rockingham. Yeah. Uh, yeah. And I'll, I'll, I'll group in all cause mega 
Championship Wrestling and AIW. I said this on Twitter at One SF Podcast. By the way, uh, I had stated cheap plug. I had stated that Cleveland, Pittsburgh is bright, but Cleveland is just as bright because you've got yep. Daniel C. Rockingham, who might be next to Bulk Nasty, Bulk Nasty, Chris Laverso, Golden Sheik, um, and Mambo Italiano. My favorite wrestler. Who I'll say he's my favorite wrestler that I don't manage. Daniel C. Rockingham, there is the Philly Marino experience. There is Jocelyn, who at Stomp Out Cancer beat the holy bejesus out of me. So, um, <laughs> so you have to say first hand knowledge. That is true. You have to say there's nice Frankie things. Flynn. There are, there's, and I apologize to those that I'm leaving out. I know they're there, but uh, there are so many that I'm leaving out. In Pittsburgh now, obviously, I mentioned Bulk Nasty. There's Katie Arquette. There is uh, Jinx. There is, we, we, we see it up in Rural Valley. There's Jamie Jamison, a guy who's, who flies through the air that, Marcus Mann, uh, upon seeing him, said he's a guy who would fit in ECW. Mm-hmm. That just big brawler, ass kicker type guy that will go out there and fight you. Um, that that type of, of, sure. of style and character. There is uh, a lot of young talent, and I think a lot of young talent that five years from now will be saying, "Hey, remember when they started?" Uh, or uh, and then in five years from now, we'll have guys that then fit that mold. That's the one mm-hmm. nice thing. That's why I think Pittsburgh will always constantly be developing because there's always a pipeline, one place or another, even if they train here, work there, whatever, there's always a pipeline. And I think you even see that now with, with guys that have been around for, say, maybe five years, like Duke Davis and Gannon Jones Jr. Uh, I've always said that when they came to IWC, that was... That was, I think, a big deal because those guys are supremely talented. Yes. I mean, yes. six foot five here, here. and they fly through the air like it's nothing. Uh, guys that are, you know, six inches shorter can't do some of the stuff they can do. So right. when you see two guys of that size, mm-hmm. um, obviously I put over my guys, Chris LaRusso and Bulk Nasty, but the IWC training school has put out a number of, of great talent. RWA has brought in some amazing people yep. that, that might not be seen otherwise. Right. Yeah, yeah. yeah I, I think one thing that, I've always found very curious and very helpful, I think, is that the the talent that works different groups within the Pittsburgh area, they're not just limited to one or, or two groups. Because I think you, you can work a, a different different style in both places, maybe maybe heal one, baby the other. I think that helps the, the variance a little bit to get different crowds. And, and generally, you know, that accessibility, you know, of course, generally you want everybody to travel, right? right. And get out into different areas. Right. But... That's also not realistic sometimes for some, especially some of these newer guys. Oh, cool. right, yeah, right. So yet, at least, yeah, you know, they're still figuring out getting to a certain threshold before they. Oh, get yeah, out what, yeah. Once you, I mean, once you get, you know, once you get your 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 training wheels out from under you, you know, yeah, in terms, yeah, in terms yeah. of your training, get the and, hell out, get somewhere else, yeah, right, yeah, exactly. But just, but, but just do, I mean, you do something yeah. in, in just to get experience to different crowds in different areas, right. You know, right. if, if I'm working... And those are so different. Again, RWA versus this crowd versus a KSWA crowd. Exactly. And, and there's a lot of crossover. It really microwaves... It can, it can microwave the experience. I mean, mm-hmm. if I'm working baby... If I'm, if I'm trained to mostly work a baby style and I go an hour away from here but they don't know me and I get to work heel for a little bit mm-hmm. to, you know, to cut my teeth in that area. And I've heard so, those comments from people. I was talking to some of the people on them after their match that I know and we're like, yeah, I'm working a heel here. I don't know about this yet. I'm just like, well, yeah, exactly. let's get into it. Yeah, I mean, and there are some people in the RWA who, who work one side or the other, and that's the only mm. place where they work that particular side. And figure it out now. I feel weird giving wrestling advice, but figure it out now before I uh, sat down with one wrestler who's on television now who was uh, mostly having a tryout like you know match with Ring of Honor back when they were on HDTV. Sure. And he's like, yeah, they had me do the face yesterday, and now I'm doing heel, and I'm not comfortable with that yet. And, of course, he <laughs> does has done a tremendous heel character since on television. Um, and you know, don't figure that out now before you go to a ring of honor or WWE performance center and say, here, try this, you yeah. know, right. and right. at least have an idea of if you're asked, what would that be? You know, so you have some familiarity with and, it. And there is a guy and I'm not going to mention him because he's not worth mentioning. Uh, see, I was, I was too positive on here. I'm not, I'm not, <laughs> All right, yeah. wait, 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 we're about 30 minutes in the show. We'll let the bearing begin. And, and <laughs> obviously, my BFF Potter tells the story better than I do, but he's not here, so I will. Uh, we had asked him. Uh, there was a show we were working, and there were guys working out in the ring, and it it looked like uh, it looked like a bunch of animals at the zoo just got let out of the cage. They were running into each other. They didn't know what to do, um, and they were having matches on the show that night. But this gentleman said that uh, he would never, ever, ever work as a heel. Doesn't believe in it. 
To which Potter asked him, well, what if Vince McMahon signed you? He goes, he wouldn't sign me as a heel. And I went, oh. okay, this guy is a clueless schmuck and nice tennis shoes and shorts there, buddy. Nice gear. <laughs> so th <laughs> there are some of those that exist. Right. Mm. Uh, but I think now I think it's, it's kind of, I don't want to say weeded itself out, but it's held in close circles. It's held in circles that they're drawn small or they're not running all the time, or uh, in some cases, they're not used all the time. Mm -hmm. uh, I have no problem with somebody if they want to be a wrestler or what have you, but where my issue is is if you're not taking it seriously or... And people you, notice. Yeah. I, I mean, people notice that you're working with, that you're working for, and if, yeah. if yeah. you don't and it's obvious, that you're just not going to get a callback. It's, yeah. like, it's like anything else. The medium is the message. Yeah. And I think the one thing that a lot of a lot of wrestlers and a lot of fans lose sight of is, or at least it seems to me they do, is that if they want to get to that the the next level, if they want to get to Stanford or they want to get to the other places, realize that it is an entertainment company. Yeah, it's not a wrestling organization. They don't. It's not next man up. It's not ascension. It's casting. It is. If if you fit the right role they need at the right time. And, you know, you have the good attitude and all the back end stuff. But if you could fit the role they need at that particular time where they anticipate needing six months, 12, 12 months, a year and a half from now, you're going to be that guy. Yeah, and I, I I've heard I've had so many conversations with people, so many conversations. We'll, we'll take James Ellsworth as an example. I was just going to say, why yeah. did mm -hmm. how come James Ellsworth is on TV when X, Y, Z, A, B, C, D, E, F Same. are more talented than him are yep. better than him, have done more in the business than him? Why is James Ellsworth on TV? Because James Ellsworth fit a role. He is a unique character that these guys, that they, they, they aren't necessarily. They could be five-star guys in the ring, put five-star matches on, but they're not the character that the WWE needs right now. And that's the difference, I think, with people that understand the business aspect of it and that have no earthly idea. Like people, uh, people knock uh, Joey Ryan. Right. Well, that's not wrestling. Well, yeah. it's it's what wrestling is like. Yeah, it's yeah. it's going that route, right? And that's not to say that Joey Ryan didn't train and just put up bought a pair of tights and went and okay, I'm gonna do this now. No, like he he really busted his butt on that. Mm -hmm. And you know, whenever I hear uh, that that same argument about the James Ellsworth or the Zach Gowan, I know there was backlash. Well, this this kid, you know, da 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 da. Sure, that that's what they needed. And uh, I think there are some people that understand that. And it's because you mentioned entertainment. That is a huge part of it. Mm -hmm. uh, I'll say mainstream Chris Benoit. Yep. I don't, regardless of what happened, yeah. everybody knows that story. But yeah, he had great matches. But when he was champion, wasn't a huge draw. No, no. I mean, granted, his first program was against Kane, who was fluttering in the mid card. But that was his first. Was It was a feel good moment. It was right. an amazing moment. Obviously, looking in hindsight, it's a little weird. But wasn't exactly a huge draw no it's it's more who is a guy that somebody wants to go see and that's why i said this on my facebook a while ago about lists of things that people can do when they start and i think not only in pittsburgh but anywhere i love that list by the way like, i love that thank list. you like learn photoshop learn video editing understand yeah. that yeah. you're nothing like if if, right. if you showed somebody a dvd of any company in syria and say oklahoma they wouldn't really give a damn they might find guys that are that are you know Oh, this guy's interesting. Hey, that guy's in, but they're not, they don't have that ex excitement Sure. to where people in Pittsburgh might, you know, they see you a lot. So they're like, Oh wow, that guy's kind of cool out in California. They don't give a damn. So you're right. just another schlub. When, when I have somebody on this show and you know, I get a lot of younger talent on here and somebody that was less than a year in the business, like from his first official match. And they're already like running promotions on Instagram to get people to watch this, this show. Like that's like, all right, you're gonna do okay. Yeah. <laughs> you know, like, yeah, right. like, 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 like you're gonna get attention, and you know, and they're backing it up in the ring and the character and everything. And it's, you know, there's there's that package. You when know? You, you understand everything. Yeah. Yeah, yeah. When you said running promotions, I really thought you were gonna say guys a year in the business run their own promotion <laughs> training school. And my brain was gonna. <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. But a guy yes, that we, I will, yeah. that I will put to that extent, which you said little bit of time in the business, but amazing as far as promotion is Jackson Argos. That's exactly yes. who I was yes. talking about. And yes. he, he Absolutely. said, one day he said, you know, I, I'm starting into this and I'm, I'm going to catapult See him right now. What I got. Yeah. Proud member of, uh, of team storm. There yep. you go. There you go. Sadly, all... Jack Pollock, not in the IWC. RIP IWC Jack Pollock. But, um, uh, but long live rise wrestling. Jack that, Pollock. Is <laughs> that is true. <laughs> Against uh, Lee Moriarty on February 10th. I believe so. Yeah. So man, I'm getting all these cheap plugs in, but, uh, that'll be, 
$25 for each company and person that I mentioned. <laughs> no, you got but, the company wrong earlier, so... Uh... Yeah, well, it's, I do what I do. Uh, <laughs> it's not always accurate or, or done well. But uh, but no, Jackson Argos is that guy. Mm-hmm. Yes. Mm-hmm. And, and and another guy I'll throw in there, too, and he's a guy I think that, that with reps and with time can develop into something really good, is R.C. Dupree. Mm-hmm. When he... His style of interviews are very different. Right. And he puts up music videos that are very different. Nobody he, else is doing And Lee Moriarty, I throw in that yeah, too. Yeah. Like yeah. just so somebody told me once when I started, uh, said something about putting yourself over in self promotion. And I said, Well, I was taught not to do that. And they said, Well, who the hell else is gonna do it? Who is literally right. more equipped to say how great they are and put themselves out there more than you? Especially so. in this, and I had the same conversation around hip hop. You know, these guys are mm-hmm. writing the lyrics yes. and doing the songs and making themselves seem like they're you know top shit and everything. But then they get an interview and they can't really push themselves, right? Yeah. So I mean, it, it's a lot of you it's, know the same conversations happening. It's there. all context. Yeah, it, it really is the Absolutely. context. Well, on that point, um, as I uh, double check, see if there's any other comments in here, but there's been a bunch of people hopping in and out of this. Some promoters, some other wrestlers. Uh, but <laughs> <laughs> if any of those promoters would like to book me, they may contact. So, uh, I think a lot of them already do, actually. Well, those promoters <laughs> are very, very smart. Then. <laughs> but, anyways, um, uh, you know, what is your kind of final wrap up? Uh, you know, looking forward to 2018. Do you think uh, strongest year in Pittsburgh wrestling coming up, or are we going to see a drop off of this big number of promotions happening? I don't think there's going to be a drop off if mm-hmm. anything because of the success. Now I say this without uh, any kind of egotism and, and anybody who worked for somebody else would say this. I feel that I work for the best promotions in Pittsburgh. Now, mm-hmm. obviously I say that because I work for them. I wouldn't be like, Oh, well they're okay, but no, but I truly do feel that just in the momentum that they have going with what IWC had with Adam Cole with granted Chris Jericho was late 2015, but close enough. Yep. It's like that Pittsburgh. If you're an hour outside, eh, we're in Pittsburgh. <laughs> it but, works. It works. But with Adam Cole and, and the success of Super Indy and Meadville with the Hardys and everything that, that went through, I mean, the sky's the limit for, for going yeah. forward. Yeah. And Rise with everything that they've done with the last few shows, because I'm on them, and going forward. Fashion like, show, baby. Absolutely. Nothing says wrestling show like fashion. And mm-hmm. literally, that is the place where westling is literally on the marquee. Yes, it is. <laughs> yep. There is a marquee, that is and true. it says wrestling. Yep. Like Art yep. Anderson said, it says marquee on the wrestling. But uh, he actually did say that, yep, just, right. just like that. Uh, but no, but I feel like those two promotions are going to go well. I know, as we mentioned earlier, Fight Society, a change in things. We'll see you know, where they're going. Obviously, they have a plan going forward. They always have their dates out. They always have a concrete plan. Uh, RWA, Rabbit fans, obviously, he can speak to that. Yep. So I don't think it's going to slow down. I hope it doesn't. Mm-hmm. And I think... This is going to sound so cliche, and feel free to throw oh. something at me because I hate to use cliches. No, I don't. No, uh, they're easy. I think the real winners are the fans. Yes. Mm-hmm. So this is probably generally. Uh, I remember. I, I think maybe it was Norm that said one time about. I was like, it was really easy to run a wrestling show around 2000. Yeah, because it was yep. so hot. And now, yeah, there's a lot of options, and people know that the options are out there, and people are looking for those other alternatives whether on something like WWE Network or otherwise New Japan Ring of Honor locally, um, I think it's the best time to take advantage of these kinds of like things. Ha- having those options is really the, the the key because now I think more than ever, given the past year, year and a half of the entire business, not just Pittsburgh, yeah, you see the proliferation of anything that's not WWE. Maybe, mm-hmm. you know, it's not just one company, but it's it's the collection of things that are out there. Right. I mean, look at this thing that, that Cody's doing, the, you know, self-funding, the, the show coming up, the yeah. uh, the all-in show. If it, And I don't that, know what ties are going to have Ring of Honor or anything else, but that is like the utmost independent promoting happening, right? I mean, yes. Yeah. It's one guy with his money putting it all on the line and just and, and doing a show by himself. I mean, yes, the Bucks are going to be there, Kenny Omega, and all, the, all of his contacts are going to be there, but... Using that and you know using that as a platform. I mean, seeing that Rolling Stone is doing articles about the Young Bucks and they're doing these vignettes about the Young Bucks and Omega, and even and, about hardcore wrestling, right? And, yeah. and that sort of thing. And using wrestling as as an entertainment form, just as almost like a almost like a revival of you know we know what the WWE is, we know the WWE is up here in the stratosphere, but 
using the revival of of indie wrestling as like an underground thing akin to punk or you know mm-hmm. sort of that that sort of vibe yeah we kn- I, and i think you can hand to it the work that ring of honor has been doing to, yes. to improve that audience their numbers are increasing like you know uh, at least by thirds every year yeah. i think 2017 was their best absolutely year, absolutely best we will really look at the numbers on the show it's incredible lucha underground i think has created a new buzz on the on oh this is what wrestling could be Right, and you I think, know? and I think that's what it is. They're 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 reinventing at that level what mm-hmm. wrestling is. I mean, talent wise, do you get all the five star guys that you had when Ring of Honor started? Do you get mm-hmm. the Brian Danielsons? Do you get the Punks, Samoa Joe? Maybe not necessarily, but you get the different direction that that level Absolutely. of wrestling is going. And I think that's a combination of things like we were t- we were showing somebody last night. Kaiju Big Battle's been around for a while, yep. but then you have we've talked to promotions that do pro wrestling in theaters and yes. try to make it a theater presentation. Right. Like these other outside the, the wrestle wrestling, not wrestle circus, but the wrestling circus squared circle wrestling. I think it was called in Detroit that we went to with, right. with Zach Allen. You know, these old wrestling wrestling was done in a library in New York City. E- exactly. Yeah. With right. D- with DJ Z. Yeah. yeah. Speaking of, um, I'm still trying to get that to happen here in Pittsburgh. So, uh, <laughs> hey, guys. If anybody from the Carnegie Library is out there. Up the street. Uh, up the street. Yeah. Yeah. You know, I don't know. Yeah. We, I mean, well, you know what about that ring will fit in there. It's not a lot of you, know, you can move some. We can get one of those ten foot rings. Yeah, exactly, yeah, right, exactly, right. like the one at the midget wrestling that fit in a bar. Uh, so it was really, it was well, it was really useful uh-huh. in that size. Yeah, so, yeah, huh? makes so, sense. You yeah. know, one thing I was gonna say, if I were, because it seems like wrestling is, I don't know if we're gonna get back to the nineties, mm-hmm. to the mid nineties or late nineties, where right. Austin made ten million dollars in t shirt sales, and and even the lowest card guys were wealthy six-figure earners but if i was a television executive i would try and somehow figure out a way that i could because wwe is taken wwe is on usa right if i see there start to be a money train that's loading up i want to attach myself to it i would try and get something i don't know Mm -hmm. tna ring of honor commitments the legalities the the contracts the tv state but i would try and get something because it looks like if things keep going how they're going hot topic sells young bucks and all that merchandise i mean it it's something other than WWE is starting to come around. I would try and catapult on that. So, so if any TV executives want to hire yeah, me, I, have I a think great idea. I mean, that that's such a, that's such a catch twenty two though. Because I mean, yes, it would be the great idea to catch to, to catch this wave. But at what point did you jump the shark almost immediately once you cut once that's you catch true. that wave? Uh, yeah, yeah, yeah. I mean, that's exactly no, no. You make the money while the wave's going. <laughs> right, but that's exactly but that's exactly what you know the, the TNA had in mind. That's exactly mm-hmm. what that's what exactly what. Every non WWE entity has in mind that mindset to try to capture it, but eventually, you know, there's only one one group that could do it right on TV. That's it true. really is the appeal of everything else is that underground feel. It's the chance to hey, it's not what you see on TV. You go to this club. It's it's, it's like a bar. It's like it's it's literally, you know, I I relate what I do in indie wrestling to an indie music show. It, it's it's you go down and see you know three or four bands for twenty twenty five bucks. At a club down there, you have three or four, you have a couple of beers and just a couple hours. Yeah. That's what I'm. That's yeah. what I can local wrestling to. Mm-hmm. And I think that's where the appeal is. I mean, if I say, "Oh, I'm, going, I'm working to a local wrestling show," you know, come see local wrestling to a friend who doesn't know what wrestling is, they're neither here nor there with yeah. it. Yeah, it's wrestling, great, whatever. But if if you say, you got to feel this energy, you got to feel the RWA energy of that crowd and just mm-hmm. how neat that is, mm-hmm. and I get to be in the middle of that. Yeah, you and, know, I, and, and, I, and, and that's sort of thing. To yeah. be in the middle of that energy, that's akin to, you know, and, and I know you know this too, that's, that's exactly what I say, RWA, KSW. It's like you need to experience what this you is like. You need to be yeah. as part of this energy and, 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 and the stuff you do, BC. I mean, it's it's that energy that we're a part of. We, you know, we are in the middle of that. Yeah, it, We're not in the crowd. We're in the middle of that energy. It's it's how, describing our roles, we're the sizzle to the steak. But, right. it, but in some ways, if you're looking at the company and the product as the steak, it's almost like the smell brings you in the door. Exactly. Just to experience what it's like to be, or, or a bakery. What it's like to be in a bakery when something's just been baked almost as good as the the taste of the, the product itself. Oh, right. So uh, I think there is a lot of potential for a lot of bread to be made. Uh, oh, hey, hey, wow. hey, on, that note, on that note, wow. BC Steel. That is me. Where they can find you online doing things and jump. And we've talked about it enough. We, we, they know where you're at. Generally. Yeah, they should. I'm, I, I might show up anywhere. I we've might. talked about it basically the entire show. So I'm actually going to take over this uh, studio as well. Oh, apparently, right. yes. Welcome to uh, BC Steelatron Studios. 
<laughs> East East Steel City. Old, the, old school BC Steel City. We're a there it is. Yeah. Yes. Ah, okay. Right. Uh, one, uh, your Twitter is? At 1SF Podcast. The letter S, the letter F, and then podcast with the one in front. There you go. And look up BC Steel on your Instagrams and your Facebooks. And Bert Legrand, we think we figured out your Twitter. Yes, it's dormant. No, um, <laughs> real, real OSBL. It's, it's vacant. It's in advance. It's a lot of work, man. It's <laughs> a Twitter's bank. a lot of work. My God, I mean, you know, people crap on the president all the time for being on Twitter a lot. That's a lot of work, man. But, but, speaking but of- real, real OSBL is is the uh, yes. is it? I should do. Uh, I know I'm on. Actually, I should probably do Instagram and other things as Bert Legrand, but I don't. It's my <laughs> it's my real name across the board. Wait, well, your real name isn't Bert Legrand? It's not. I know, Son right? Of a I think well, I, I, think I knew for five years before I found that out. Uh, <laughs> we've talked. We've talked about that before. How funny that yeah, is. The, yeah, the, yeah. the 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 facade of of using of referring to people by their real name versus their 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 mm-hmm. gimmick name, mm-hmm. and uh, how how interesting that can be. Absolutely. Um, and of course, both of you guys are doing political mayhem show. We yes. we just had our second beta episode recorded here tonight. That'll be up in the Sorgatron Media Master Feed. It's uh, talking about politics in the vein of pro wrestling. Uh, again, if you're not political, maybe don't have trouble following along. I know I do. I'm trying to boil it down for you guys in terms so you're that putting anybody, it on, you're putting it on us. To, yes, <laughs> to yes. bridge that gap. No pressure. The world, right there. Uh, but the, the wrestling whisperers. <laughs> But please go check that out. Thank you guys so much for this uh, kind of impromptu conversation here. Thanks for having us. And, uh, of course, please check out everything on WrestlingMayhemShow.com. A lot of the promotions we talked about are over on IndieWrestling.us. And, of course, until next time, support Indie Wrestling. This show is a member of the Sorgatron Media Podcast Network. Find out more at sorgatronmedia.com.